Good morning, this is Tom Aspie with the Viper Alert Market Wrap video for the week ending July 29th. Well, it was quite a month for a change in the stock market, up 9%. Haven't been able to say that for this year. And uh, a very good week. Uh, and that really wasn't surprising based on the technical uh, evidence we discussed last weekend and uh, actually for the past month. Let's look at some charts. For the past month or so, I've been discussing the bullish divergence in the NASDAQ 100 AD line. So let's look at that more closely in case you're not familiar with divergence analysis. So this is the weekly chart of the QQQs. Uh, stark bands here and a declining 21 day EMA, which of course is the initial sort of resistance level. More importantly, down below, as the QQQs made lower lows in June and early July, the AD line did not. Now, this is the first time I've noticed that since the start of our data for this indice going back to 2009. Of course, I've been using the NYSC all AD line for decades, and it often but not always forms bullish divergences at important turning points. We'll show you a chart of that in a little bit. So we've broken this downtrend. This is as of July 8th. That was a really a positive sign. We wanted to see it move above this line C uh, to confirm that. This is what the daily AD line looked at the same time frame. Uh, July 8th, you can see we're just below that resistance at 314. No real di bullish divergence in the daily NASDAQ 100 AD line. Um, but it had broken its downtrend, so that was an encouraging sign. And down below here, you have the relative performance. Um, at that time, it started to show that the QQQ were going to outperform the SPY, which has been the case in July. So let's look at the futures analysis. Uh, let's look at the daily first. Um, the daily had uh, turned positive uh, back here on the 19th of uh, July. I had an entry point of 39.47 and uh, really didn't do much that following week, you know, kind of just drifted lower, um, stayed within some uh, pivot levels here. But this week things were different. Wednesday, um, we had a nice rally, um, got up to a high of 40.42. Um, and then the next day we got up to the first target at 40.44. And then on Friday, we got up to a high of 41.44. So we hit the, the three ATR target at 41.32.76. The next target is at 43.09. And uh, you can see we're up, getting up close to the Stark pans here. Um, and uh, we're a bit overextended. The 20 day EMA is well below the market. Uh, indicators are positive here on the daily analysis. And, uh, you know, we drifted lower. Our first target was 39.11.86. We got down here to 39.13 and change, uh, but never hit the first target. Flipped back to positive here at 5.20 a.m. on the 27th. Um, and alert was sent out to reflect that with a new stop. You can see, uh, once again, Jerry's dynamic stop did a great job. Just kept you right on the long side here. Um, first initial reaction on Wednesday to um, FOMC meeting and people's perceptions. You know, at that point we had a high of 40, 42 and three quarters. So we hit both the first target at 41, 40.001.57 and then at 402.246 um, both that day and then um, continued to move higher on Thursday. Um, we hit the the next target at 40.64 and a quarter, and uh, continued to move even higher, closing the week at 41.32.50. Uh, stop is still well below the market, but it keeps moving up, and at some point probably will be triggered. Overall, it was a pretty good week. That first short trade, we took a hit by my calculations at uh, minus eight. Of course, past performance is no guarantee of future results. And you shouldn't count on those, but uh, we do, um, using the dynamic stops, we can control the risk moderately well. Um, the rest of the week was just, uh, we were in at 39.62 from early the 27th, uh, 40 points here, roughly 60 at 40.22 and 102 at 40.64.
and uh, you know, so some of you still may be long. Not a bad week, not quite as good as the prior week. In a subscriber-only session later today, I will be talking about some of the indicators, but it's important to note that the signals, reversal signals, are based on the price action, not on the indicators. We provide those uh, because uh, I like to study both the relative performance and the stochastic confirmer and the volume patterns. Um, but, uh, you know, in, in the futures, you know, just following the, the, the reversal signals is what is recommended because um, there are, you know, totally objective, whereas the analysis of the indicators is subjective, um, but can be helpful in other, other areas. So let's look at the uh, SPY daily basis. Uh, nice run here. We got right close to that little, perfect little pullback. This is why I find the 20-day EMA to be so helpful. Some of you should have gotten a, a trading lesson based on this. And if, uh, if you haven't, uh, drop us a line and we'll send you one. And uh, you know, we co pulled back here. The low on that day was at uh, 389 and 95. Uh, the 20 day was at 388.65 and then we accelerated the upside here um, the ad line you know broke its downtrend now looks ready to challenge the major downtrend here at line c uh, we did move above the daily start band on friday so at and the 38.2 fib retracement level that probably hit some stops the rest of the stops are probably you know above these highs here and the 50% level at 421.08, 61.8% is at 434.98, and the downtrend around, around 438. So certainly, if you got above 4400, you're going to probably get most of those bears to change their tune. Let's look at the QQQ. Um, not yet reached the 38.2% resistance at 322.54. 50 at 339, the downtrend 328.67. Feel pretty confident that within the next week or so, this downtrend will be overcome. AD line in a clear uptrend. It's moving average is also rising. Uh, volume picked up on Wednesday, but tailed off a bit. So it'd be nice to see a really strong, you know, over 75 million volume day here in the near future. That would help support the bullish case. Uh, a little closer look at the NYSE All AD line. You can see it did form a daily, but not a weekly bullish divergence here at this low. We had an interday low here, higher lows here in the AD line. We moved above this downtrend and uh, through this resistance rather than the downtrend. You know, um, a week ago that was a, a very good sign. And um, based on my trend lines, we've just overcoming the major downtrend, which is a very good sign for the intermediate term. There's also been some improvement in the NASDAQ high-low analysis, which have been very weak. Uh, those of you who read the article on Viper Report about that, that's what helped indicate the major slide in the top at the end of the year. So, you know, they're rising. You know, I like to get, you know, well above this peak here. Um, but it's encouraged that the number of new lows have been drying up. That's what you want to see at a turn. So that's all good. 1,300 is the downtrend in the NASDAQ composite. So that's not far away from current levels. That could easily be uh, hit with some follow through buying early next week. Uh, this weekly chart of the S&P shows that this 4177, you know, that was uh, basically the high in, in May, you know, the March high at 4637. Um, most encouraging thing on this chart, well, two of them, the NAAIM equity exposure is finally appears to have bottomed out. Um, this week, so that's good. I'd like to see it move even higher above 60% or so next week. That will be a sign the institutions are moving back in the market, which is what's needed. And uh, below that, you can see the S&P 500 based on this analysis. Uh, the weekly chart is either close to or has it broken its downtrend. So it's good. been a good month for stock picking. Um, this is the uh, current positions as of uh, the close on Wednesday. Um, uh, the position we currently have in there. So it's been a, a nice stock picking market. I, I would expect that continue. Um, and uh, yeah, they're, they're much cleaner sometimes than the averages. Uh, you know, took a couple nice gains in Treehouse. Um, DG International is really a, a rocket ship. Um, our open position 
as of fr Wednesday's close is up 16%. It's even higher than that now. So we took 14% there, 14%. SEMO was not quite so good. We, we exited part of the position at 86.36 to reduce it because I didn't like the way it was acting. Stopped out of the rest, so that was not great. And we're, we last week we got into Canadian Pacific and into Walt Disney. And if you go to Viper Report, the entire Viper Hot Stocks issue for uh, Thursday, uh, the 28th, 28th is posted if you'd like to take a look. Of course, if you'd like to learn more about technical analysis and what we do at Viper Report, you can go to viperreport.com. And this is the home page. Um, and it'll take you through a bunch of past articles we've written, some of which have also been in Forbes. And of course, if you want to see that most recent copy of the Viper Hot Stocks report, just click on this link for July 28th. It'll bring up the report and you can download it, print it out, uh, um, and give you a chance to read it and uh, look through the analysis of how we pick stocks and what the tools are we use. If you're interested in specific actionable advice on stocks, you can click on the Viper Hot Stocks link here. It'll take you to a description of the service, just $34.95 per month uh, through PayPal. Um, you'll uh, have a chance to renew after a month or you can discontinue the service if you so choose. We also provide advice on ETFs. Uh, the Viper ETF report uh, gives you specific information about ETFs, which ones we like and why, which ones are leading the market, which is very important. And if you would like a free copy of the latest Viper ETF report, just put uh, Viper ETF free in the subject line and email me at tom at viperreport.com. As I've mentioned in the market wrap videos on a regular basis, the 260-minute futures trading system based on the S&P futures has done very well catching both the up and down swings. If you want to know more about it, you can see this link here. It'll take you to a description of what's included in the service and also uh, an offer so you can save 30% on a three-month basis. It's good for either if you're an option, short-term option trader or if you're a futures trader. So I hope you found the video beneficial and thank you for tuning in.